Hello and welcome to Caring Matters Podcast. I'm Liz Tasson, the volunteer host, and I'm here today for our part two of being with Lucy Creekmore, who is a longtime caregiver for her mother, for her brother, for her sister, for her, and currently for her husband mm -hmm. for uh, many years. So she's had uh, a, a long, really, almost like a lifetime uh, yeah. uh, caregiving experience uh, that continues. Mm -hmm. So uh, she has been willing to talk with us and tell her story a little bit. And um, Lucy, I wanted to ask you, uh, you know, given that you've done this for so many years, uh, what is it that challenges you still today? Well, I think being, um, you know, wanting to take care of somebody and it just challenges you to do the best you can and um, do all that you can and I know there's a lot of people out there that uh, when they have somebody in the family that becomes ill um, they don't take care of them and, and I think this is wrong because this is what marriage is all about and I think this is what encourages me because I have such a loving husband I mean he has never complained one day that he's had this stroke He's had tremors for years and a uh, hearing problem, and he never complained. So this encourages me to stay with him as long as I can and that I'm able to take care of him. So he gives you some inspiration, too, oh, just yes. knowing what his life is about. Oh, yeah. So you're really present to, yeah. to his pain and his suffering, but, to, but he's not complaining about it. Oh, no. He has never complained, and um, he has uh, Parkinson's. He used to have essential tremors, and it's gotten so bad that uh, they diagnosed him with Parkinson's and he has dementia. And he's uh, paralyzed on the right side where he cannot walk. Um, I have to do everything for him, uh, wash his hair, do the bathing, uh, take him to the bathroom, um, do all this. The only thing that he can do for himself is to brush his teeth. And I have a pyro toothbrush that he can do that. And um, he's uh, hard of hearing. Uh, he's lost some of the peripheral vision on the right side, so I mean he's not in very good shape. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's, you know, he's such a wonderful person that he's had a, he's had a hard time, mm -hmm. you know, to go through this. Right. And I hate to see him going through what he's going through. Yeah. Uh, he used to be a singer in Florida, and uh, he loves music, and it was hard, mm -hmm. you know, for him to have to to get that, that up. Do you yeah. still play music for him? Uh, um, not too much. No? No. Okay, so music yeah. isn't a part of his no, life much anymore. Uh, really, there's nothing that's really part of his life anymore other than uh, getting up and watching TV or going mm -hmm. to bed. He sleeps 10 to 11 hours at night, and he sleeps 3 and 4 during the day. Uh, sleeping has uh, really taken over his life. Okay. He wants to sleep more and more and more. Okay, yeah. okay. And so how do you keep yourself refreshed during this time? Well, um, sometimes you don't. <laughs> um, I go uh, out on Tuesday. I get to go out on uh, Tuesdays and Fridays. Uh, from Council on Aging and Passport, um, I have caregivers that come. And um, so I get to go to curves and, and I bowl and try to keep myself in shape strong-wise because I have to do most of the lifting, uh, you know, for him. Mm. And uh, he helps me. I can still take him out in the car. Uh, but he seems to be getting weaker. Uh, he's lost about 30 pounds, and uh, so it's just, uh, you know, it's just hard on him. I yeah. hate to see him like this. Oh, I bet. Yeah. I bet it's tough to, to It watch. is, to see your loved one. We've been married 55 years, and it's, uh, uh, we met on a blind date when I was 16. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, we've been together ever since. Wow. So, uh, but there, there are times that he's uh, in a worse condition, you know, and, um, and uh, I've been talking in the support groups and things like that. Um, you don't know what to say to your husband uh, when he's in this condition because uh, uh, being a Christian, you would rather see him go home to be with the Lord than to sit and go through all this that he's going through. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it was suggested to me that uh, maybe I could, you know, say something to him about, you know, do you want the Lord to take you home? And I didn't think I could do that. Uh, but then one day he was really in a pretty bad shape and he was sitting by me in the wheelchair and he uh, he just got so bad and I said honey are you okay and he says no and I said well 
you know, any time that you want the Lord to take you home, you just ask the Lord to do that. And I said, I'll be okay. My kids are here. and They'll take care of me. And he goes, okay. You know, mm. but I don't know, you know, his uh, memory. He doesn't remember too many things. Yeah. So I don't know if he'll remember that, but... You know, I just have to... But it felt right, right for that time to yeah, be able think, to say that. I didn't think I could ever say that to him. But at that particular moment, I don't know. It was just the time that was right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was just right. It was the right moment. And uh, I know I had to say that to my mother. Mm -hmm. And she died the day that I said it to her. Is that right? Yeah. And uh, we had to tell my dad that. And so I think there's a time they just hang on. Yeah. You know, for you, they're, they're worried about you. Right. Right. And when you let them know that you're going to be okay, then they get peace. I it think. gives them permission to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so that's a brave thing to do. Yeah, it was hard. Yeah, it bet. was really hard. Bet. But uh, but I know you know he would rather be with the Lord than be here right now. Because mm -hmm. I mean it's, he's just not the same. He's getting mm -hmm. weaker and weaker, and uh, it's getting hard sometimes to take care of him. And I don't know how much longer I can do it. Yeah. And that's what worries me. Yeah. I know that's a worry for a lot of caregivers. They're yes, afraid it is. that they're going to wear out before yeah. uh, then their work is done. <laughs> well, I think the fact yeah. that you do take care of yourself and yeah. you know you get the exercise and you do some of the things that right. help refresh you. Right. With and the, with Council on Aging, I don't know what I would have done with that. And passport, um, you know, with the help for the medicine and the help for the the briefs and the diapers and you know things like that that I get. Uh, the support that I get from them. Uh, if anybody out there doesn't know anything about Council on Aging, they should definitely get in touch with them. Yeah. They're a wonderful organization. Yeah. So they've helped me tremendously. Wow. Yeah. Well, you have, uh, you inspire me oh, with all you. your <laughs> level of caring that thank you do you. for all these people in your life. Well, I like, think you just teach yourself. Oh, you yeah. have to do it. You know it has to be done, and you do it. Yeah, there was probably nothing that could have prepared you no. for what you were uh, no. heading into, but no. you stepped up and you had faith that you'd be yes. given what you needed. Yes, definitely. And uh, every day you seem to be given that. Oh, yeah. The Lord yeah. says He won't give us any more than what we can handle. And you've been able to, yeah. to live that out. So I hope to continue doing it because I don't know when the Lord is going to call either one of us home, so... You know, we just have to do what we can do. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you for all you oh, do. No, I, I'm sure you. that uh, a lot of times caregivers don't hear thank you all yeah. that much. <laughs> yeah. But I think um, I always notice when I see a caregiver out and, and knowing that, you know, when I see someone out, that's just the small part oh, of their yeah. day. And the oh, rest yeah. of their day at home, um, you know, taking care, it doesn't oh, yeah. end. And no, so it doesn't, um, it know, doesn't show the what you have to do at home, taking them to the bathroom, uh, when they have uh, accidents in the bed, you have to, <coughs> excuse me, clean all that up. Um, and it's embarrassing for the person that does sure. it, you know, and it doesn't bother me. Yeah. I'm used to it. But um, the things that you have to do, the things that you go through when they see things, you have to go along with it uh, because when people have dementia, they actually see those things. So and rather than argue, oh no, don't argue, you say, okay. I'll get rid of them, or I'll, you know, it's do something this. frightening, yeah. Right. I mean, my husband has seen monsters in the bed, and uh, I had to take him out of the bed with me and put him in a hospital bed in the living room, and it's helped a lot because he's uh, he gets in there, and I raise the bed, and he watches TV in there, and, you know, he gets so tired of sitting in a wheelchair, and so I've made it this way where I can put him in there. Oh, great. And watch great. TV with me and, and uh, things like that. So. Well, it seems like each day you learn some new adaptation oh, yeah. and way to be with him yes. so that you can be the best caregiver right. possible for him. Right. So it's it's really inspiring. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you for sharing your story with oh, us as well. Thank you for having me. It's very touching. Oh, thank very you. Very touching. Thank you. So I, again, want to thank Lucy Creekmore for sharing her story, uh, such a touching story and a lifelong story of service to her loved ones. It's, uh, quite beautiful so thank you. thank you and I also want to thank our sponsors of this podcast they are VTOS Hospice, Hellebrand Home Health, Home Care by Blackstone, Family Bridges Home Care, Lifespan and Bailey so thank you for uh, continuing to sponsor this podcast. I'm Liz Tesson thank you for listening and always remember that caring matters. <laughs>